Well, we've been doing a lot of talk about the things that are coming up this season and, of course, the ebb and flow that is racing. Of course, the landscape has changed a lot over the years. One of the things that has changed is IMCA Modifies. We were just talking about this the other day with Ronnie Ford from down there at Afton. They're going to be running a schedule this year where they're actually every other week uh, switching between those uh, and slingshots. should be interesting to see how it works out. One guy who uh, wants to weigh in here has been driving uh, different cars for 18 years. 27-year-old Jake Maynard is going to be running an IMCA Modified this year. Uh, he is part of a series. He runs the New York Penn IMCA series, New York 10 series, they're calling it. So uh, New York Penn series. So let's go down to Wyalusing, Pennsylvania, and see what's going on with Jake Maynard. Jake, how are we doing today? I'm doing pretty good for Monday. Not bad. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Did you get out this weekend, this past weekend, or no? Uh, no, we're still actually waiting on the engine to get back. Uh, pretty much uh, wait on parts still. Gotcha. So how did this series come about? Uh, back in 2020, in the midst of the COVID deal, uh, uh, King of the Can was coming up, and back in that April, Gary Falk and I, Jr., talked about bringing IMCAs in, and he got hold of me in August. About the end of August, he says, you got one month, can you promise me 15 cars? I said, yeah, I can promise 15 cars. Uh, he said, I'll give you guys 1000 to win, 100 to start. How's that? I said, yep. I'll do lap money on top of that, and I promised the 15 cars. We brought 23 to the wow that night, and lap money was sold two times a lap. So two drivers walked away with lap money each lap. Were you surprised that it came together like it did? I was very, very surprised. Um, I was kind of fretting it. I mean, this is my first pretty much promotional event, hoping, and when I turned around and heard there was 23 cars signed in. That was pretty ecstatic. Starting at April 23rd, by the way, this coming weekend, they'll be going at Sellins Grove Speedway, and this one's over 2,000 to win, 2,023. Afton, Woodhull, Penn Can, Bloomsburg, The Hill, Bradford, um, a lot of these places, Bridgeport Speedway, they're all going to be a part of this series. This had to be a tremendous amount of work to put this together with all those different racetracks. It, it's been a chore in, over the last uh, two years. This is our third season. Uh, first year we had seven races. Last year we had ten. Uh, this year we got eleven, and I'm still waiting on one more track to give me uh, a confirmed date. That's Clinton County. Okay. Uh, to make it the Dirty Dozen, which has been my goal for two years now. Now, where are these drivers coming from that are going to run this series? Where Where do they run? Uh, pretty much, we got guys coming from. Uh, Potter County, uh, out there in the Shore area. They will come run Afton bi-weekly. Um, got mainly all the Hill guys down here in Bradford County. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we will have a few guys come from Michigan this year also. Really? Uh, we, like A.J. Ward, Brody Bowser, uh, a lot of those guys, they, they like to come out and join the fun and hang out with us. And A.J., he's come around here before in one races, hasn't he? Because that name sounds familiar. Uh, yeah, actually, he came this way quite a bit, and he won up there at Wheat Sport in 2015 in the Northeast Shootout. And he actually had quite the track record coming east. He would, um, he, I think he had eight, eight on nine races before he came this way for wow. the first ninth ten race. And he ended up, I think he's at like 10 or 11 races, one out of 13 in this area. So it's going to be a big show, guys. What is the All Star Challenge? What are these All Star Challenge races? What does what does that mean? Uh, we teamed up with uh, All Star Performance out of Michigan, and pretty much a driver who can win three of the four races will pocket an extra oh. five hundred dollars cash in their pocket. Um, if they can pocket or get two races of the four, they get two hundred fifty dollars, and the other two hundred fifty will go into the points fund. Um, we could also have two drivers split the money. Uh, pretty much, it, we have to have a driver pretty much win two of the four races in order for them to get the bonus. If not, all the money will go right straight into the points fund. Gotcha, and get divided up amongst everybody else. How far back are we paying in the point fund? 
Uh, top 10. Top 10. All right, so for those of you guys, I know there's still some of you out there that have these cars and have just been saying, man, there's no place I can go or I have to travel to do it. At least coming to this series, that would be a nice incentive because they know they're not going to show up and get seven or eight cars. Then there's going to be multiple heats and should be a lot of fun. So you're encouraging guys who've been in, been out to get back in, I would imagine, Jake. Uh, we, we've had some guys looking to come back in. Uh, this year we got Aaron Jacobs. Oh. He went and bought another car. Nice. And He's coming back. Uh, J.J. Corsi has been looking for a ride. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been contemplating on putting him in mine a few times to okay. get his bus knocked off. He always liked those IMCA modified cars. I remember he uh, always talked about how much he enjoyed those. Yep, and we, we've had the Stoddards. They ventured out the three stocks and sportsmen. They came back to IMCA. Uh, Matt Roberts came back to IMCA. Oh. Um, we, we've had quite a few guys that used to run the class they came back i know a few that still have cars that have pondered about coming back to the class which is a great thing um i'm always open to bringing back the veterans of the of the class all right jake maynard by the way is on facebook so look him up if you can't if you're not on facebook and you need to just message me through the channel here and i'll make sure that i get you in touch with jake and get you more information we got i just want to make sure you know we got about four minutes left so i'll let you know when we get close to uh, our end deadline here what is it that happened because you and i were kind of talking a little bit before i hit the record button what went wrong with imca modifieds was it not enough tracks too many tracks was it oversaturated why did it start to fall off in your mind uh, I, I believe the main point, I don't think we were oversaturated with the track. Um, I believe we had the right amount of tracks because we were still getting good car counts throughout the Northeast. Um, when Ed Billing stepped aside due to health issues and everything else going on in his life, that pretty much seen the downfall of IMCA. Uh, they brought Walt Allen in. And he did his one or two year tenure, and once he stepped aside, also it just everything just started falling because there was no way to lean on. And yeah, somebody has to make those calls to the promoters and do those yep. things. Yep. And without somebody to do that, so it was also in Central New York. I noticed you, you and I were talking again. Kevin Cook, um, Dale Caswell, a lot of those guys. As soon as the late models came around, jumped to that. Did that was that part of the problem? At least maybe in Central New York, anyway. Uh, I would say in Central New York, that, that was part of the issue, or I wouldn't say an issue, uh, just something that happened. Um, and then down here in the Southern Tier area, you had the 602 crate sources coming around, yes. and a few of the guys jumped ship to them. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much when you get something that seems a little bit more fun or something that you can afford to do. Mm -hmm. And well, race more places, too. I could see how Correct. having a car you could run three nights a week would, would be something people would be interested in. Was the technology where they went to the four links, did the cars almost get to a point where a, only a certain percentage of people truly understood how to set them up properly? Was that a factor at all? I, I don't know if it was, that could have been a factor. Um, I, I, I could see where the expenses part would come into play. Okay. Um, I, as, as we all know, once something evolves, everybody has to have it. Yeah. Prices of things go up. Whether you really need it or not. But, yeah, the perception is i got to have the latest, greatest thing. So, hmm, good point. Uh, when I started out, I started in a three-link and then gradually worked my way up to a four-link. And I, I feel that I was competitive enough with the three-link. I was reeling in top five, but I wasn't competitive yeah. enough to gotcha. go for a win. A lot of reasons this this happened. I'm going to be looking into this. Jake's going to get me in touch with some people so uh, that are doing this now. And I'm going to get a hold of some of the people I know who used to do this. And we're going to do a little deep dive in here and find out what's going on. But the big thing, the reason for this call, I want to tell you about the New York Penn IMCA series. You can find them on Facebook. Look up the group. Go ahead and like it. You can message Jake. And if you have specific questions or maybe if you want to get involved with the series, that's a good way to do so there. Jake, keep in touch. Let's get a hold of each other about another month, and we'll, and we'll hit this again, and, and we'll see what we can learn in the meantime. Sound good? Yeah, that sounds great. All right, guys, hit that bluey down there. That'll subscribe. You turn on notifications and watch an ad, okay? Don't skip by it right away. At least watch one. Help me out a little bit. So uh, but we'll be back to this soon, and I'll be getting a hold of some of you guys. Again, doing a lot of stuff. Can't wait. It's almost go time here in the Northeast.